Hey YouTube, it's Vince Romano 26 here with an antique store haul for you guys today. I apologize for not getting this uploaded on Sunday. Uh, it was a pretty hectic day. We were out from 10 in the morning to approximately 8 o'clock at night, so I didn't get a chance to do the video. So this is for, I believe... The first or second, I can't really remember. Probably the second. It was probably the second. I know it doesn't look like much to all of you, but it actually is. Spent thirty four seventy five at this place, and I got these two grab bags here, which is full of stuff that I can't wait to show you. At the store, I only paid. Let's see if we can get it in there. I only paid thirty four seventy five for everything you see here. There are a bunch of resale stuff. I did go through these bags, and there were some things in here that were not vintage at all, so I decided to chuck them or just go throw them downstairs in the garage until we do the flea market in spring. So I guess I'll start off with the things that weren't in the grab bags. I thought this was pretty interesting. This is a uh, high and dry gin red lion advertisement. Uh, bring in about 20 or 25 bucks depending on condition and this one's nice there are no cracks or chips in the line at all and if we look on the bottom here it's marked Allen Industries Manufacturing Company Inc. in Newark, New Jersey paid three dollars for this uh, the antique store that we went to was huge it was another antique mall uh, however prices were absolutely ridiculous. They were worse than a regular antique store. But we never knew unless we tried, and um, for those of you who don't know, my dad has really been obsessing over vintage razor blades. He didn't realize how much of a market there is for them, so we've been scouring all kinds of antique stores and antique malls lately, and estate sales also as well, just to see if we could find any. And he's found some for a really good deal. And if any of you are interested in vintage razor blades, I'll put his um, eBay link in the description down below so you can email him for trading or possibly purchasing anything from him. But anyway, back to this. It was $3. It was on the clearance rack, which I thought was pretty good. All the stuff that you see here is from a clearance rack. Or a clearance section, excuse me. So, I think I did okay there. It was the only thing that I ever bought. So, or only things that I ever bought. So, I think I did okay. Next really, really cool piece is this, um, is this vintage snowman. Uh, he is made by the Broadway Toy Company in New York. He was only $2. He is, he does have some condition issues. He's ripped right here, as you can see. And his hat is really messed up. It's all cracked and there's holes in it. But I only paid $2 for him, so... He's going to look great with all of my vintage Christmas stuff. I have all those vintage Santas on that one shelf. I might swap out the ceramic angel and put this snowman there. And even though he was beat up, I thought only $2. I mean, I couldn't go wrong, and that's a steal. And I think they were originally charging like 6 or 7 so only 2 bucks. I couldn't go wrong with it. All right, now we're going to get to the two grab bags. This one I believe I paid 15 and this one I believe I paid 10 bucks for. I did mix and match them, so I don't really remember exactly what goes in what bag, but all I know is that I paid 25 bucks for two grab bags of stuff. And there's some pretty interesting stuff in here, stuff I would have never have thought to have found. There are only a few eBay items in here, and then the rest are going to the flea market. thought this was very cool. This is a probably 40s or 50s Lipton tea bag advertisement. But it's not what you think it is. It's a promotional giveaway, and it has some sewing needles in it. One of the needles is rusted out, but that's okay, because it gives it that age look, you know? So I thought that was very, very interesting. And it's in really nice condition. It's really bright and vibrant. Uh, there are only a few little marks that are cause for a problem, but nothing really is too serious. There's no rips or water damage or anything, so I thought that was neat. Next piece is this really, really neat Aunt Jemima salt shaker. As you can see, she's pretty beat up and paint's coming off of her. These are really not worth as much as people think they are just because they're black Americana, but I'm going to bring this to the market and I'll put $4 on her and see if anybody buys her. I mean, still, she's still very cool looking. I mean, it's Aunt Jemima. Who doesn't like Aunt Jemima? But I would definitely not put this online because there's so many of them. And if you bring it to a flea market and ask 
a really good price for her. I think I'll just sell her. And I think what's really cool about the old salt shakers is that they have S and a P for salt and pepper on top, which is pretty cool. She has her original plastic cork to her. Let's see what is there any writing? Yeah, it's on the sorry. It is F and F Mold Dye Works in Dayton, Ohio, made in the United States. So I thought that was really interesting. And um, just so you know, all this stuff did have price tags, so I think the guy was just like, I gotta start moving stuff. So he priced everything, and he left the price tags that he was gonna ask originally for the stuff. He originally wanted $10 for the Lipton piece. He wanted $24 for this. I just thought that's ridiculous. So I'm glad I got all this stuff for $25, because I would have just paid $25 for her. Alright, next pieces. I don't know if these are vintage or not, but they are pipe holders. I assume they're pipe holders, because it's got that look to it. And I don't remember if these were marked or not. I think one of them was, but I, I don't think it was this one. So this one's nice. There's no chips or cracks or anything in it, so I think that should do really well at the flea market. Oh, uh, here's the other one. Let's see if I can find... The oh, here we go. This is the one that had the marks on it. Uh, let's see if I can f read it. Varsity Pipes Bachman Bros Inc. I really don't know if these are really worth anything, but if I bring them to the flea market, put like 2 or $3 a piece on them, I think someone will buy them. Especially if um, people collect old cigars, or cigars, pipes, and they want some old displays to go with them, I think this would be great. Alright, next pieces, which I'm debating on whether or not I want to put these online. But these are uh, Mr. Peanut Salt Shakers. I thought it was salt and pepper, but when I looked at the tops, they're both salt shakers. So I don't know how well these um, things do online. I'm going to have to look them up before I decide to sell them. And what's interesting to me is the fact that one of them has plas a plastic cork and the other one has a like a, I don't know what kind of material that's called, but it's kind of like a wine cork kind of thing, so I assume this one's probably older than this one because of the plastic. So I might look these up and see how well they sell for online before I decide to bring them to the flea market and put like $2 a piece on them. Next piece is this Model E Valet Auto Strope. Strope. And it says it's prepared especially for a Valley Auto Strobe razor. I really don't know exactly what this is. I know it's for a razor, but I'm, this might actually go online too. I don't know exactly what it is. An Auto Strobe. If anybody knows anything about these, could you please let me know? Because I really don't know what, anything about this kind of stuff. So I'll have to look this up online and see how much this sells for. And if it really doesn't sell for much, it's going to the flea market. These are definitely not going on eBay, but I just thought they were kind of interesting. They're Atlas nickel-plated steel thumbtacks. There's a whole box of them. I might just bring them to the market, put maybe a dollar on the box. Uh, don't really know if anybody will buy these, but if they're cheap enough, someone will buy them. Maybe 50 cents. I might just do a vintage 50 cent bin. Alright, this is another eBayer, I believe. This is a vintage seltzer, um, I don't know what you call these, spout. And if you give me one second, I can show you a um, vintage seltzer bottle that I have. That'll kind of show you what it looks like. It goes on the top here. And you push down, and then the water will come out of the spigot, and then squirt. So I thought that was pretty interesting. That might do well on eBay if somebody has a, uh, <clears throat> a seltzer bottle, and they just need the lid for it. So I thought that would do pretty well online. Maybe start it at 5 bucks, see if anybody bids on it. Alright, this is like a 50 cent piece. It's a tape measure. Made by Blue Cross, Blue Shield in Virginia. Definitely not worth anything. It looks like one of those promotional giveaway kind of things. 
So I'll just put that in a bin for 50 cents. I have no clue as to what these are. There's two of them, I think. One's a teapot, it's a pin, I think. And then this, I have no clue as to what it is. All it's marked is Torino. And I have no know nothing about Torino, so... Alright, this is pretty cool. This is a... Either it's glass or it's metal. I think it's metal. Metal cork to put in wine. Don't know if it's really vintage or not, but I just thought it was really neat. It's pretty decorative. I might put that in my showcase and then say it's three bucks. I don't know exactly if they're worth anything. So, I'll just do some research. Alright, last piece from that bag, which I thought was... Or what I was told is that it was probably worth the whole bag is this um, vintage Ray-Ban sunglasses or case with sunglasses. Not 100% sure if these are actual Ray-Ban lenses. However, I assume that they are because they came in this case. But what I'm gonna do is when I these are going on eBay. I'm gonna just mention the fact that these lenses came with the Ray-Ban case so they might be Ray-Ban but I'm just gonna list I don't know so I'll put those back in here so that's definitely an eBay or along with the high and dry gin and possibly the auto strobe alright so that's it for this bag I think there's only a few items in here. Maybe I just mix and matched it. Alright, this is another keeper. This is probably one of the only things that I wanted to keep out of the whole bag. That's probably why I wanted it. Is this? I think it's either the late 60s or early 70s um, Coca-Cola... I don't know what these are called. It's not a fanny pack. It's like a money collector or something. Like, you just throw money into it. thought I would use it for the flea market. Or maybe even just put it up for display or something. They're called something. I, I just can't recall it at the moment. Um, what is it called? No, I don't remember. Apron. It's like an apron kind of thing. I mean, I wear an apron for home goods. I should probably have known that. And I'll just put money. I think I'm going to throw it through the wash before I do anything because it is pretty dirty. And we'll see how nice it turns out when I clean it. All right. And Oh, there's one more piece. This is um, something pretty interesting. It's a whole thing of matches. I don't know anything about matches at all. So I'm going to look these up online and see if I can find any peerless diamond matches at, at all. And see if they're worth anything. And there's some miscellaneous ones in here too. I don't really know exactly what I'm going to do with these. I know people do collect the matchbooks, but I don't know if there are any, excuse me, specific ones that people like to collect. So I'll do some research on these and see if there's anything in here that's worth putting online. Alright, and the last piece for the haul video is this gammonry thing. It's kind of like one of those flip books that kind of tells a story. Let's see if I can get it in here. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Let me do it back with this way now. And do that again because I didn't get it. Thought that was pretty interesting. I might bring that to the flea market. It's marked six dollars on the back, but I think I'm just gonna ask three just because it's from 1967. So it's a 48 year old piece, and it's in excellent condition. I don't think any pages are missing from it. So I think that'll do really well. And that is everything that I got at the antique store this past weekend. If you haven't already done so, please remember to hit that subscribe button. And as well, click the link in the description down below to go to my eBay page as well as my dad's eBay page. If you are interested in any of the items seen below or are interested in vintage razor blades. Oh, my bad. One more thing. Really neat vintage dog. Um, I think it's a corn syrup glass jar. That's probably not going to be worth all that much. I might put $2 on that just because it's glass. Sorry about that. So again, if you haven't already done so, please remember to subscribe to the channel. And as well, click the link in the description down below to go to my eBay page for and if you have any interest in any of the items shown in this video today. As well, I will put my dad's eBay link in the description. So that way, if you're interested in any vintage razor blade, which he has some listed at the moment, and if you're interested in trading with him, 
uh, just click that link. And anyway, thank you all for watching.